Hi, Joe. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? I'm, yes, I can. Nice Good. to see you. I'm going to mute myself and turn off my camera for a couple of minutes while I finish my lunch. Go right ahead. Okay. Hi, Barry. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good. And you? Oh, hanging in there. Good. Busier than, busier than a one arm paper hanger. That's great. You know, Keeps it's you just young. A, huh? Keeps you young. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about those young hairs on my head shortly. Yeah, I know. I know. I trust me. I get it. I get it. Oh, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of like I'm just flying from one thing to the next right now and it's yeah i know i my wife is uh, one of the co-chairs of the daffodil festival so oh geez this morning i was over at bartlett's doing manual labor yeah no did, all, all hands on deck with that one that's right get it yeah it's a big weekend yeah no it's it's pretty major and you know this is kind of like one of you know the the major events that's gonna, you know, again, start kicking things off post COVID. Yes. So I, you know, I have no idea what even downtown looks like at the moment, but I'm sure people are just streaming in. We'll, um, we'll see. I'm certain. And we also had that one day where the ferries were shut down. Oh yeah. Yeah. That backed yeah. up a lot of cars. I agree. Hey, thanks for all the emails you've been me i really appreciate it it's it's been really awesome um sometimes i'm sorry if i can't keep up with you but um well you know, some that, of the things are really interesting and i think it's worthwhile passing them on oh yeah no definitely 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 that that but, tbs um, program was really well done yeah no I, i've seen that actually and it was you're right it was incredibly well done the, hey, the Melissa. impact Hi, the impact on and infants or young children with epilepsy was dramatic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, and, it's, and that it's guy a, that got nailed in Arizona just driving through with a medical card, which isn't acceptable in Arizona, was a mess. Just a mess. Terrible situation. <laughs> Well, you know, when it, when it comes to dealing with marijuana, because, you know, again, the whole thing, as we've talked about, kind of boils back down to what's going on with the federal government. You know, no one is really quite sure. So the default is always to go back to, oh, yeah, it's criminal. It's criminal. It's bad. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, you know, so it, I, that's definitely, you know, it's one of the major challenges for the industry. 
to this day. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully the feds will, you know, see that clear. The you know, message we, that came out of the PBS program was, it'd be great if there was some more research so we could see what's going to happen. The problem is it takes years to get some really solid research on the impact of marijuana on people. You don't get well, it in six months. Yeah, no, and, and the, there, there are two major problems with that. If you're doing any kind of research, it's still considered a schedule one substance. So you've got to get additional special licensure for it to be able to do it. You know, and you can, and as you, you, you identified to me in one of the articles, you can only get it from one place, which I think is uh, that, that University Michigan. of Mississippi. That's it. That's it. If you want to do research on marijuana, you buy the product out of the University of Mississippi and you say, what? What the hell are they talking about? Because you have to, because of you federal standards, to. you must get it, you know. And then and there's an like, issue of quality. There's a difference in quality. So you're stuck doing the Mississippi stuff, which may or may not be as good as you can get elsewhere. And that makes no sense. It's, <laughs> I'm gonna use two words again in that process, federal government, and that should summate the entire- They're issue. here to help us. Oh, yes, indeed, absolutely. And boy, you know, it's, it's kind of like killing with kindness. Uh, unless, unless, so Melissa, how are you doing with this? Sorry. That's all right. I'm good. Good. Yeah. Keeping you busy? Getting ready for uh, town meeting? Yeah. I feel like all I have to do is show up. <laughs> I hear you. Right? I hear you. I'm, I'm envious. <laughs> I'm I don't envious. know if you, I don't know if you really are, Barry. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. Jealous. Well, it is school vacation week, and I have not a clue whether we're even going to hit that match. Well, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah that's that's kind of why I was wondering if we were still meeting, because I know um, I know the select board didn't meet this week because of yeah. school break. Yeah, I was, I was you know, usually when I try to get something out of, like, you know, if there's an opportunity, is, you know, to have people just kind of circle back in and say, hey, guess what? That's just really not going to work. For me. Yeah. You yeah. know, because we, we can all, there's, there's, there, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle, but we can always change, you know, meeting times and stuff. So, and uh, usually what I, you know, sometimes I'm not always seeing ahead of things. So like when we hang up today, I'm going to already start creating the agenda for the next meeting. Awesome. Yeah. So it sits, it sits on my desk and then we, you know, just keep continuously changing or adding to it. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sure it reminds me as well too, because um, the meeting postings are, are a little bit tricky because you've got to schedule the zoom meeting. Yeah. Uh, and then once that's scheduled, the next thing you do is have to incorporate that data in, to the posting you're going to do and that's got to go to the town for you know them to get it ready to put it up there in a pdf format yeah. so there's there's a few hoops to jump through in the process administratively yeah there sure are yeah. um <clears throat> okay well, i'm sorry i was just gonna say well if um it doesn't seem like we're gonna get a quorum i suppose um, I'll, are you, if you guys don't mind, if we'll try the 15 minute run and certainly if you got something more pressing, Melissa, I get it. I get it. No, you know, I can wait till one fifteen. Okay. I, yeah, that's, that's kind of, I usually try to do that no matter what I'm doing with zoom is just to give people that 15 minute interval to, uh, you know, cause sometimes life's a little messy and then getting onto zoom is its own challenge at times for some people. Um, Okay. So, and I hate, you know, I, I'll, I'll always admit to you up front, I hate wasting everyone's time in these, you know, if that's truly the case, because we're all busy people. I can't think of any of us who are going to be like, oh yeah, I'm done with the Zoom meeting. I'm just going to kick back in the chair now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure for both of you, yeah. there's just a host of other things that are like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. Yeah. And frankly, I know the two of you too, if, if you do kick back in that chair, it's well deserved <laughs> at that moment. It's well deserved. 
correct. I see John Bartlett is on this call. Yeah, he's muted. I don't see any video. Uh, I saw him walking right. by this morning with a cup Did of coffee you? as we took over his uh, part of his, one of his hothouses. And I will tell you, it was hot in that hothouse. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But all the daffodils are happy with that. I'm sure they are. Barry, would we need just one more for a quorum? Is that? Um, what is it? One, two, three, four. Uh, hang on for a second. I'm sorry. My brain's a little addled today, so you're going to forgive me for a moment. Yeah, one more would do the trick. Okay. But I haven't really heard back from anyone saying, you know, we, I can't make it. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't know. I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to maybe be a little... I'll have to figure out how to intone that into the email somehow. You know, the next time we do this. Just to say, you know, I, I need to know if you're going to be there or not, because. Yeah. Well, that way, if you know ahead of time, then we can either just postpone the meeting or whatever. No one's. Yeah. No one's yeah. Our, time. I, mean, I just, I just texted Dave Iverson to oh, see good. Okay. if he was going to come in. Um, I don't have cell phone numbers for Mary or Dorothy. I think I know I've got it for Dorothy and I might have it for Jacques. Oh, as well no, I think I have I think I have Mary Lefry. Yeah. There it is. It's official. The meeting's going to the dogs. <laughs> That's my puppy. <laughs> let's 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 have it go to the daffodils, not the Hey! Dogs. John Bartlett, how are you, sir? Good. 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 Yeah. Busy, I'm sure. sure. We are we are happily busy. Yes, that's good. Uh, about to, good you know, time. go down. We're past the point of no return. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking you're especially busy too with all the daffodil stuff and everything. Like, you know. Yeah, we're happy that we can host again. So um, we're taking full advantage of our hot greenhouses. That's awesome. That is really awesome. John, I heard somebody this morning say, we don't know what we would do if we didn't have the Bartlett's. Well, we're happy to help. It takes a, it takes everybody though. Yeah, we had a lot of volunteers this morning, which was great. Yeah, it'll be fun to, uh, to see it all set up for the judging. There's so many different kinds of daffodils that you just, think that there's just the, a couple, but there's really a, a tremendous amount of variety. There has to be hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. So my grandma, my grandmother was very involved in the garden club. So we're happy wow. to, uh, to help carry on that tradition. Yeah, the garden club doesn't allow male members, so we're on the outside. We're just uh, <laughs> servants. That's not always a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. All right. I texted him. I got all four. Yeah, so I texted Mary and Dave. I haven't heard a response. Yeah, it's okay. We'll pass to them from a few different channels here. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if this is inappropriate or not, Barry, but have you heard an update on Act Natural and what's going on there? I haven't. Things are very quiet out there at the moment. Yeah. Very, very quiet. Um, okay. Yeah, I, it's no, it's okay to ask. It's fine. It's not not impermissible to ask. But um, no, the moment I, you know, I haven't seen anything either from the Cannabis Commission nor have I heard from um, Ryan Sullivan either or any of his associates about what, mm -hmm. what's happening out there. So I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> well. But if any of you hear anything, you know, just... Uh, 
keep keep everyone in the loop because uh, we're all we're all curious. Yeah, that's such a shame. Such a um, investment into that space. It's a shame that this hasn't. I, I'm just so curious what's going on. Yeah, I mean that you know right now it's just them trying to get all of the lab certifications. That seems to be the case, and so the lab mm-hmm. certifications still need to be um, addressed. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that's what I'm aware of from the last set of communications we had. Um, if there's other issues, I am completely unaware of them. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. So, and I don't want to, you know, make it sound like, oh my God, there's other things. Yeah. No. That's the, only, yeah. no. The, the, yeah. Lab, the lab is the only thing I'm aware of right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Melissa, if you haven't seen the PBS program called, it's a one hour program called The Cannabis Question. Oh, it is okay. really well done. Oh, thanks, Excellent. Joe. I'll take a look at that. Thank you. Sometimes when I'm doing my bookkeeping work, I like to have a documentary or something on in the background. It keeps my. You could, uh, see, you could see the effect of cannabis on children with epilepsy. It's just dramatic. Wow. And also the problem of every state is different. Mm-hmm. They, they use an example of this black couple that they were going from California where the, the guy actually had a medical marijuana card mm-hmm. in California, got stopped in Arizona where that's not allowed, mm-hmm. got jailed, mm-hmm. felony charge. Oh my God. What a mess. What, what a, a total mess. mess. Just terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Well, thank you for that. I will definitely look into it. Yeah, I agree with Joe. It was really a good program. It, it's definitely worth the, the hour watch. I thought, I thought they did a stellar job with it. So. Three minutes from touchdown, Barry. <laughs> yeah, I hear you at this point. Let me let me tell you how quiet my phone is at the moment. <laughs> um, the uh, oh, hang on. Here we go. You got three dots. Dot dot dot. Someone on a phone. Thirty-two seventy-four. Oh, that's an odd exchange, 221. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cell phone exchange. Uh, let me see if I can figure out who it is. Hey, Barry, it's Dorothy. There you are. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for being Mrs. Quorum. Yep. I appreciate it. Hang on for a minute. I'm just going to do one thing. Um, up there. I'm going to come back. Got to go get the key. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. Let me do the dreaded two minute speech here just to get us rolling. And then hopefully some other people may join us. All right. So as a preliminary matter, this is Barry Rector, the chair. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Dorothy Hertz. Here. David Iverson, I have as absent. Meredith Leffrey, I have as absent. Melissa Murphy? Here. Joe Plandowski? Here. Jacques and Mickey, I have as absent. And as far as I know, I'm here as the chair. So good afternoon, everyone. This open meeting of the Cannabis Advisory Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. 
This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Cannabis Advisory Committee is convening by audio conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be ca captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I, in the role of the chair, notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first agenda on the item. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, as the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, Please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comments, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. Members of the public wishing to participate in this meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in the discussion. Town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name or acts appropriately. That's it. Or I could go on and say may cause hair loss available at an APR rate of 2.21%. And so on for more advertisement. But there we go. All right. First thing on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen. You have an agenda before you at this point, and I would like a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. And a second. Second. All right. Roll call. Melissa. Aye. Joe. Yes. Dorothy. Aye. Chair votes in the affirmative. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have no draft minutes. Public comment. John, do you have any? Oh, and I see Jason joining us as well, too. We'll grab him in a second. John, do you have anything for us you'd like to, to bring up? I don't at this time. All right. Thanks. Jason, are you there with us on audio yet? Yep, I'm here, Barry. How you doing? Good. How are you? Welcome. I'm glad you can make it. Thank you very much. Um, we just got quorum status a few moments ago, so we're just starting things in. Um, we're kind of at a public phase at the moment. Is there anything you want to just bring up to us or should we keep moving on? Keep moving on. I'm just listening in. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, excuse me just for one second. So if you're good, there's, there's going to be a final day where we actually do get a quorum at this point where, yeah, well, I shouldn't say a quorum, but it would be nice to have the full board to be able to do election of officers if you're all good mm -hmm. with that. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so. Mary, just a, another yes, suggestion on that. Yeah. Um, town election, you know, is uh, May 10th and there'll yeah. be a new select board member. So it's. We don't know if it'll be me or not. I'm just saying I, it might be nice to wait until after that. Sure, that's, anyway. that's yeah, that'll actually just happen to work out really well. And your just point's well fine. taken. Um, <laughs> and just as a personal note, I would love to have you still on this. Yeah, yeah I really would. Thanks. That's that's my, my sentiment. But um, all right. So I think I did. I hopefully I'd sent you the note notes um that i had with um town council on um just some of the things going on with the cannabis industry where we are with nantucket and what's going on kind of in the state as well too um 
I think what was kind of fascinating was that when we came to things like social consumption, not going to happen. The bylaw, it just absolutely does not permit it. By the way, the person who I talked to, Nicole Costanza, absolutely wonderful person, very articulate, knows the cannabis industry very well, not only about what's going on here, but throughout the state as well, too. So she's a wonderful resource to tap into us, uh, you know, to be able to tap into. And um, she was very succinct and brief, but, you know, like I said, very comprehensive at, at, at that same moment. Um, the other thing which I found kind of enlightening was the whole delivery aspect. Mm. Um, the fact that there really were two classes of delivery operators, which wasn't even really clear from the cannabis, um, from the cannabis, uh, committee there, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and the fact that one of the two classes could actually wind up doing things like repackaging and stuff. Also, the other thing is they don't require a license which is kind of nice. Um, but what they will have to do is that if they want to do that, that, that part of the industry, they're still going to have to approach the town with a host agreement and they're still going to have to, um, I'm sorry, my sinuses are killing me here. They're also going to have to go before the cannabis commission as well too, to be able to file an application for that. So we'll see where that brings us out to in the past, a number of people had, expressed an interest in doing it but um it's been a little quiet out there since but at least now we know what our footing is and how to address that situation let me yeah. just stop there for a second because that's been a lot do do you have any <laughs> questions or thoughts or comments you'd like to bring up anyone just raise your hand i'll apologize i do yeah go ahead joe I, I have no problem with delivery being done by the estab marijuana establishment. That's fine. My concern is if you put in an independent party that's doing delivery, that means there are more hands in the pot, more problems along the way. Just keep it simple. Keep it with the establishment. You want to deliver? Fine. The establishment, go deliver. And I did find... I, I, a while back, I found an article out of Michigan where there was delivery service and they were delivering it for $2 a delivery. Nobody could make any money doing that. And you certainly wouldn't get a third party involved doing that either. Well, like, like I said, you know, it, it, I think it'll be a, a matter of if someone's so inclined, but there is a way for someone who wants to do delivery to partner in as well, too, with one of the two um, cannabis uh, companies here on the island. Dorothy, Barry, did you I, have I can't something? Yeah. I said, I, I just don't have, I can't put a hands up off my cell phone. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I know that. And trust me, I'll, 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 as I see some a little bit of activity. That's why I was just going to call on you. Do you have anything? Well, I just want to remind everybody with uh, with everything, you know, in, in looking at the state bylaws too, you need to have two drivers on these cannabis cars. Um, there has to be a driver and a delivery person at all times. So there are two people in it. And I think before this really goes much further, we should actually be talking to the facilities that um, are, are you know, distributors here, I shouldn't dispensary, sorry, and see how they feel about it too, whether or not they're, they feel that it's financially worth them to do it because they have to have two drivers. Mm -hmm. If one of those drivers is sick, the delivery cannot go out mm -hmm. if you don't have both drivers. Um, and it, you know, they have to have lock boxes. They have to have cams on them mm -hmm. to record all the transactions that are going on. So it's not, it's a, an investment for somebody to be able to do this and do it legally. Um, and I would, if you're reading what has happened throughout the state and how they're, how they're either successful or not successful, some of the dispensaries themselves are saying the cost wasn't even worth it. Um, and then subcontractors are saying the same thing. When you actually follow the guidelines of the state, depending on how much you're doing, um, because it can't be in just a normal taxi that this happens because you have to have a lockbox. As I said, there have to be two drivers, you know, driver and a delivery person that they have to record all of it, not only by camcorder, but on writing. So it's a lot of work. Um, and I think it would be interesting. I don't know if we've done it, Barry, but I would be talking to 
the dispensaries and see how they're feeling about it on their end too. That's mm-hmm. just my my opinion. Mm-hmm. Melissa, did you have anything? No. no. All right. Okay. <clears throat> um, so one last thing. I'm sorry. I need to just switch screens down here for a minute. Oh, Lord. There we go. So there was one other thing that Nicole brought up, which was kind of interesting, town council, um, that she had a sample or two host community agreement with a town with with one or two towns and they they seem to be rich according to her they were just so well written um so i don't know if that's going to be something that we'd want to entertain do a little bit more thorough review and bring it before the board of the select board um i don't know whether i i can't say for certain but there may be some talk about maybe changing the host community agreement here that we currently have, but I'm a little fuzzy on whether that's that's being looked at or not at the moment. Uh, Melissa, I don't know if you have any additional information to share on that. Um, hate to put you on the spot, but. No, that's okay. I don't have any information. Okay. Um, when we recently talked about um, you know, keeping the advisory committee formed beyond 2022, um, yep. the, the board voted to have it for an, an additional two years. Oh, good. Okay. That's already been um, done. Beautiful. Yep. And I think that um, some of the understanding from the board would be that um, in the absence of this commission, the planning department would likely come to the select board with some recommendations on the host agreement or something like that, um, or the planning department anyway. So I still feel really new that to all of this, I'm not entirely sure how it's all meant to work, but um, my, my idea of it was that if there was some proposal of change going on, we would get that from the planning office and we would be able to review it and give some input or feedback on it before it went to the select board. But is that how it would work or should work, Barry? Um, actually, here we go. I'm not, I mean, because the, the planning office doesn't, they deal with this on a very peripheral basis, mm. um, you know, mostly through zoning, if nothing mm-hmm. else. I think that was um, the idea was that, you know, the, but, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, Host agreement really isn't a zoning issue per se. Yeah. It's more, okay. It's more what the town and the you know and the select board representing the town want to be able to carry forward. Yeah. Um, okay. If if the, if there was the want, you know, I'm I'm thinking a few things right now, so it's it's kind of a free train of thought here. Um, yeah. This may be good to wait until May, and hopefully you're back on the committee. Because mm-hmm. it would definitely involve the, the select board representative having that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, what, what I think we could probably do would be to get the current host agreement back out to the board, mod, take a look at that in comparison to what was sent out by town council, and see what the board thinks about what changes, if any, should be implemented in that process. And then have a board to board discussion um, to be able to see if the, you know, the select board are willing to, to adopt any, you know, what we may have for them. Yeah. Or at least just know the fact that we did it. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that sounds like a good plan. You know, yeah. I mean, certainly I don't think there's any harm of running it by, by plus with this, but that's, it, there's, there's really no one to sign to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, when it, you know, the only reason I had Leslie involved in the process with that is because there were some issues that, that were related to zoning that were worth discussing. 
Mm. And of course, like anyone, you know, when it comes down to that, they kind of want to know what's what's going on underneath it. Um, to be able to say, okay, I can see how you're formulating those decisions. Um, they were integral in, in crafting some of the language that we currently have for our bylaw, but I'm not sure that, I'm sure they're always going to be the best fit for it. Okay. Yeah. But does that kind of sound like a game plan is, is just to maybe think about doing that after after we get past town elections and stuff, maybe on a June meeting and see where that brings us out to. I'm seeing heads nodding. What do you think, Dorothy? Can't see your head nod or shake. I lost you. Hey, Barry, yeah, I'm for that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the phone to mute and unmute. No, I get it. I'm just, yeah, all right. No, I'll, trust me, I'll, I'll be patient with that. All right. So unless there's anything else on that topic, I'd like to be able to move ahead into the next subject area real quickly. Okay. So the hemp, interest, the hemp industry is another whole process altogether. Now that doesn't fall anything, that doesn't fall strangely enough under any cannabis regulations at the moment. It's all under agricultural um, that, that, that's being taken care of, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. But then Joe gave me an article which turned my entire head around. And the article basically addressed that with using hemp, you can actually get cannabis out of the hemp and it's at a much cheaper price for the final product than it is by doing it by the conventional methods that are happening right now. So the short of what I walked away with that is that industry may change into some very odd and interesting directions. Mm. Um, I, and so if you don't mind, let me, let me just go to Joe for a second, not to put you on the spot, but does that sound about right? Or do you have any other takes on that since you said well, that? Our my take on it is that if you go the hemp route, the cost is about one eighth as I recall, of growing yeah. this stuff the way they're growing it today. And besides that, I'm sitting back thinking Bartlett's farm is going to turn into one enormous hemp field because you don't need the fluorescent lights and all the rest of that stuff. You just throw it out there in the open field and grow it. And it, that could have a dramatic impact on what happens with, in the cannabis field. It's so, so inexpensive. Yeah, it, I think it would hey, be Barry, can I comment? Yeah, please, John, go right ahead. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So we're going on our fourth year of growing hemp. Um, and I, I don't know the article that Joe's talking about, but you, you can't... Um, you can't process right now, I don't believe, THC, uh, you can't extract it out of hemp um, legally. Uh, there, as you said, uh, the hemp in industry is regulated by MDAR, which is the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture and Resources. Um, they have a wonderful staff of about five. Um, and there's not really, uh, there's not really much you can do legally with hemp because the FDA is kind of holding the hemp industry hostage. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that uh, at some point you'll be able to use CBD uh, as a food ingredient. Um, but until, until that happens, uh, it's really almost like a don't ask, don't tell type of industry. Um, there were some, I guess, collaboration between uh, MDAR and the Cannabis Commission recently that allows uh, hemp to be sold in, in dispensaries. So uh, that, that, that may be an avenue, um, but... It's still a really young industry. 
at least in Massachusetts. The thing, the thing that will happen is economics will drive it over a period of time right. because the discrepancy is so large. Yeah, so I, well, let me just go around real quickly. Um, Dorothy, any comments? Not, not at the moment, Barry. Okay, great. Thank you. Melissa, any, any thoughts or anything? No, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. So anyways, I just kind of wanted to bring that up a little bit in, in terms of situational awareness. It's not something we have to really focus on today. Um, I think it's good for all of you to at least know, you know what, what um, the hemp industry is, is reportable to and kind of what's going on a little bit with it. Um, certainly, too, I think if you have any additional questions, we can always resource town council and I'd probably say John, John Bartlett would be a good resource, you know, just to talk to on a casual basis as well, just to get a feel for, you know, some, some thoughts about what may be happening um, out in the industry. Because, you know, I've always found that, you know, in, in terms of dealing with situational awareness, we've got people out here on the island who are close to that. And, um, you know, there always been a good resource to try to figure out, okay, what, you know, what are your thoughts on the process or kind of what standard workings of it? But anyways, um, so I just wanted to bring that up, throw it on the agenda because it was part of a little bit of a side conversation that we had with town council as well. All right, moving along. So I got a phone call not too long ago from someone who wanted to do a startup in manufacturing for cannabis specifically what they wanted to do was get into the beverage industry with cannabis go zoom tight thank you uh, yeah no problem um they so they were just basically seeking some very preliminary information um, about what was involved with the process, who do they really need to talk to. Um, they do have experience and um, the ability to can just basic beverages themselves, like water, sparkling water, those things. But they do have an interest in wanting to expand into the cannabis, um, into the cannabis industry with, um, you know, doing cannabis seltzer. And those kind of things. So I was able to give them some initial guidance with things and who should they wind up contacting and what would be the flow of events to be able to do it. They would see themselves partnering with either one or two of the uh, cannabis facilities out here right now. They just can't go out and sell it themselves, <laughs> but uh, they would have to partner with, with one of those two industries. So I don't have much else from that. I haven't heard back from them since. Um, you know, we probably spent about a half an hour just generally chatting about the the flow of events and who they who they need to deal with, um, and whether it's going to be economically worth them doing it as well too. Um, you know, because granted, whatever they do, they're going to have to have the facility here on the island to be able to do it. And uh, how they how would they would wind up doing that, and how the cannabis commission would view that as either having to be an adjunct to it, whether they could exist separately and be able to transport back and forth, they're going to have to figure out that dynamic uh, before they even start approaching us. Um, but needless to say, it's not something they can just bring on the island because of of the the federal statutes that are out there right now. But I just wanted to give you a little heads up that that was kind of in the works with the process. Um, I also made sure, too, that I did talk to the people at Plus about this just to make them aware. So in case they get any phone calls about, you know, site targets or, you know, where, where would they set up or how would they do it? Just so that there's a little there a little people, a little involvement there. But um, I don't know if you have any questions or thoughts um, it's very preliminary, and like I said, it, it is, it's truly not at that stage of even being implemented yet, because they're not even sure they can afford to do it. 
when it comes right down to it. I was going to say, go ahead, Joe. My comment is not on Nantucket. It's way too expensive. Land is just too valuable. You got to go to you. Iowa, Nebraska, <laughs> someplace in the where it's empty spaces, yeah. no cost. Absolutely. Melissa, any thoughts? No. Dorothy? Uh, no, Barry, but at some point I'd like to go back to the idea of the host agreement for a minute, or the host agreement, because I have some information on it. All right. Um, yeah, you can go back to it. Let's, let's see where the conversation takes us a little bit. I'm, I'm going to close out the... Um, just that manufacturing startup. And then we'll, we'll go back for a second here and then I'm gonna get into the more act. So yeah, go ahead. Um, so I just wanted to, and Melissa, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I agree, I, I believe that there is a host agreement um, is done between the, the uh, human services department and the finance department with the town. I'm going to take with, your word you know, on it, Dorothy. I, when they when those were all signed, I wasn't on the board yet, so I haven't looked into all the who signs what. I'm gonna I'm gonna take your word for it. Yeah, so I I think that I think that that's the host agreement is. I'm not sure, but I just believe that um it you know that it was when Rachel was doing both assistant manager and uh, assistant town manager and for overseeing during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we had a conversation that the host agreement was done, like overseen supposedly right now by Jericho in the human service department and with Brian through finance. Yeah. That's what I believe. And I just wanted to let everybody know that's my understanding of it. Um, and I have reached out to Rachel and uh, Brian to try to find out if I'm correct. If I'm not, I will let everybody know that I'm not, but I believe that's where we stand with that. Yeah. Um, and, and just to add to that though, Dorothy, uh, the, you know, the final signatory authority really does rest with the select board on that. They, they may reach out to different departments for analysis on what's going on and what the thought process is, but it, it ultimately is within their ballywick to be able to do that. And I know that from the first agreement they did um, with the Green Lady to where they were with the second agreement with Act Natural, there was, again, it was a learning curve in the entire process. And there were significant changes that were introduced into the, the, the host agreement process um, to try to get a little bit better handle on it. Um, and, and just just to say that as well, there's, you know, time has moved on since even we dealt with Act Natural. Um, and so there's a wealth of information about there about how other towns have approached that same issue. So, um, you know, the host, the host agree, there's, there's plenty of modifications, I think, that have taken place through experience other towns and, and, and cities that have done this. Um, and, you know, it just, I think a cursory look would, would probably be a good thing. But I think in terms of, of you know, those of human resources and uh, or human services and, and, and uh, the finance department, they, I, I think they were, they were truly advisory in nature. So. Well, from what yes, Rachel has said to me, from what Rachel said to me, can you, am I on? Yeah. yeah, you're good. I got okay. you. Okay. Um, from what I understand from Rachel, um, when the host agreements were made, they have been they were turned over to the jurisdiction of uh, Jericho and the oh, finance department. So, okay. So that's what I'm going to say from what I'm finding out. Um, and I'm getting a copy sent to me of the host agreement. Mm -hmm. So once I get a, the copy of the host agreement, I will make sure it goes out to everybody. But that's okay. what I understand it is in um so i just thought that i'd let everybody know what i knew from mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate it. just just if you 
just if it, I, that'd be fine. If you could do me a favor, will you just send that host agreement to me first? And I'll make sure it goes out to, to the rest of the committee because I want to make sure that they understand that um, this thing really is just meant for for nothing more than the conversation will start somewhere in the latter part of June, uh, depending upon what's going on. And then, you know, there'll be certain things that have to be like the, 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 the advisory from town council and stuff will have to kind of see how to mesh that together in the process so i just i i would appreciate it It'd be a big help and i love that it's happening yeah, I, think the town, I believe the town council did this uh, host agreement so what i will do is because protocol is proper that you are the one that distributes it uh, you will get it first um, but i have just received a copy of it so oh, great. Uh, i will get it to you um my phone is dying, so I'll get it to you when I probably when I get home. Dorothy, it's all I know where to trust me. I know where to find you. Um, no, then that's great. Thank you so much for saving me that that having to track that down. I really do appreciate it. Is there anything else on that that anyone would like to bring up? All right. Not me, no. No. Okay, great. So I, that's going to bring us to the MORE Act, the M O R E Act, um, which is moved out of the House of Representatives with very successful passage and is now coming before the Senate. Um, hopefully you've had a little bit of an opportunity to explore into that a bit. Um, you know, Joe was really kind enough to kind of say, oh, hey, this is coming up. You know, you want to start tracking this because it was bringing significant changes to the way cannabis was being viewed, um, how it would go through the federal government. Um, and it really is kind of some of the sweeping legislation that needs to take place to deal with those odd issues that came up with the guy who was from California driving through Arizona. Um, so it's kind of a step in the right direction. And Joe, you seem to have you were really kind of following that a little bit more closely. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. that you'd I, don't like know to bring up. I don't know if it's going to go any place this year. It's got to go through the Senate, and that's going to be the hangup, I believe. House of Representatives, it was pretty clear that would get passed. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of good features, like the banking side. I mean, it seems totally stupid that these people can't take the money to the bank. Come on. And then what hap what's happening on the West Coast is crooks are showing up at the end of the day, holding up these places and taking the cash. Doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. Same thing with using a credit card. I mean, if, we, if we're going to allow cannabis to be sold, you use a credit card. Get out of the cash mode. But that's not the way it is. Now it's cash, plain old cash, and lots of it. Mm -hmm. Just to put it in perspective, I saw the numbers for Arizona in January, $121 million. Michigan, it was about $150 million for January. Enormous amounts of money. And just think of it, it's cash. Doesn't make any sense. I'm going to go back to my two favorite words to you, federal government. Thanks, or FDIC insured. And that's when everything starts becoming a problem. And as for the credit card industry, I, I can't quite answer that about how that works, but I'm sure there's some very technical things that are involved in that process where I think if you trace it backwards, it's probably going to be federally involved somewhere. So it's just, it's, again, it's that whole thing. Yeah, you know, well, I don't know if it'll get through the Senate. That's the issue yeah, now. Yeah. So, Melissa, anything you want to add to that or no? Nope. Dorothy? Uh, no, nope. not right now. Okay, great. So just more of the story again, it's informational awareness of what's going on at the moment. Um, if you see something coming up about it, it may be worth just a quick read. And um, I'd encourage you all, if you do happen to see anything, uh, please chime in, you know. Uh, because that information is incredibly invaluable. Um, 
Moving on to the next item, the Cannabis Control Commission um, has opened up a public comment period on the guidance on control and ownership documents that they have. And I think I sent those out to you. Hopefully I did. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so um, I, if you had an opportunity to look over it, I don't know if there was anything that was burning in there that you felt as though that we should be dealing with. Um, certainly yeah. if there is, I mean, we could always schedule a special meeting as well too, just to kind of deal with that topic alone. Um, I just did a quick cursory review and it was like, all right, I, I'm, I'm fine with where it's at at the moment. But I'm just going to turn to each of you and just see if you have any thoughts. And I think Dorothy's phone died, but that's okay. We've, we've maintained our, we've got our quorum still. We did that. So Joe, anything you want to bring up? Yes, I do. Yeah. My favorite topic, which is independent testing laboratories. When you read this thing, it looks like if I was the owner of a marijuana establishment, I could own some percentage of the independent testing laboratory. Now that would be okay if I was not allowed to send my specimens into that laboratory. But if I happen to own an establishment and also happen to own a piece of the testing laboratory, that is totally unacceptable. So I've, and I read this several times and it's not clear that you can own both or not own both. It, it is just not addressed, but it shouldn't be allowed. Melissa, any thoughts here? No, not at that point. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you feel like we, do you feel like, all right, so I'm just going to, I guess, let me just do it as, as part of a vote thing here. Um, I think I can still do that without a problem. So do you feel like we want to have a special meeting to be able to send an official comment back to them um, about uh, some of the stuff that was brought up? Or do you want to just kind of see where it tracks off to? So Joe, what's your thought? Do you want to, do you want to have another meeting to do an official I don't know. I don't know if we need a meeting, maybe a draft letter circulated amongst the members and see if everybody agrees that it's okay and just raise the question about an owner of an establishment sending his specimens or her specimens to an independent laboratory that that individual owns a piece of. Mm -hmm. That's very problematic. Okay. So you're, you're saying you wanted, all right. Um, so as not a meeting, but a draft letter. Yeah, and as long as everybody is cognizant of open meeting and just gets the comments back to you directly, Barry. Absolutely. Everyone, then I, we just want to make sure that email correspondence isn't violating the open meeting law. But I, and, I agree. I don't think we need a special meeting for it. I think if everyone's responsible, we can give any input on the letter back to you before submission. I and yeah, I agree. I agree. And thanks for the reminder on that. I know that I unfortunately have been on the other end of where that's all gone awry with that. So I yeah. definitely will make sure that that happens in the appropriate way. Joe, do you want to formulate something? Sure, be happy to. All right, and all I right, will send great. it to you. You're going to send that to me. I'll I'll do it again. Just kind of like the thing with Dorothy as well too. I'll do the distribution process so that people understand what it is we're doing and what the game rules are to have to do it as well too so that we stay we stay outside of any open meeting uh, law violations speaking yeah, of which it's, you just, now be it's just a clarification of what's in that document regarding in ownership of independent testing labs okay yep yeah, so if you don't mind I, i'd love to turn that over to you um since you brought the subject I'll done, do it. And, and that'd be awesome and then we'll just kind of take it from there all right that's great anything else on that subject while we're here joe melissa no 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 all right great um is there anything else that either of you would like to bring up joe no i don't have anything else melissa 
Uh, I don't have anything else. I, I will just note that Meredith Lepre did get back to me and said she has two sick little ones. So she was oh sorry to miss today. But, oh my. That's, that's life. And that's yep, what we're it you sure know. is. It sure and is. In, my, in my book, that's, that's always going to eclipse everything else that has to be dealt with. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So um with nothing else in mind that's going to put us to our next meeting on may 19th at one o'clock the course that will be a thursday um i really don't have anything else for you and truthfully i appreciate your time and attention for being here um your time is very valuable so and the comments are good and thanks thank you so i would love a motion to adjourn the meeting so moved Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, Melissa? Aye. Joe? Aye. And the chair concurs at this point. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Enjoy. Thanks so Thank much. You. You Bye too. Now. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks.